from from my perspective of like going back and doing these videos, it is very very easy to find when anything happens in Fedora. Like if I want to find out when Fedora switched to Pulse Audio or switched to System D and uh, anything else like that, I got, I can just it's just there. Like I can just find it. If I want to find something like um, Art just changed the way they handled packaging in the past before, finding where that was is a nightmare. Like I've got to go right. like find Reddit posts that reference that news post that maybe is still like in this location, but may like it's it's just it's not easy. Right. And then like then you look at things like these change set pages, like the one for Fedora 40, right? This is literally a list of everything that has been incorporated into the Fedora 40 release. Ah, there so are... Act basically is like a release note. Yeah, so there are 29 system-wide changes and 26 self-contained changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which makes it 55. Mm -hmm. It's not the highest number ever, but it is pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. And every one of these changes is written out in such a way that you can understand what's going on and why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. And this has been a thing from the very beginning of Fedora. We used to call them features. Mm -hmm. um, we changed from features to changes, I think, in Fedora 20. Fedora features. Is there a change proposal about changing the change proposal? Well, maybe. Uh, first class cloud images. That was Fedora 19. Let's see what is Fedora 20. Okay, so Fedora 20 changed to change sets. So the feature process was replaced with the planning process in 20. Mm -hmm. So Fedora 20 was when we switched to that mm -hmm. with the change mechanism. And then before that, we were features. Mm -hmm. So like as an example of a feature list... Yeah, this one. Fedora 19 is a fun is a fun one because that one was uh you know, that one was the one that I think introduced the Anaconda new UI, which we are well, back then the new UI. <laughs> yeah, it's not new anymore. Oh no, that was 19 was the follow-up. 18 was the one that was actually the new UI. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah 18 was that. So but you can see, like, we've been doing this for a very long time. Like, and if you go all the way back to Fedora 7, mm -hmm. oof, sorry. So if you go all the way back to Fedora 7, we don't have a fancy table. We have this weird list of in-out partial. Yeah, Fedora they've got much better presenting first... it. That's for, that is for, for sure. Yeah, so in Fedora 7... Fedora KD was the first spin. Period. Oh. Oh, okay. Yep. Hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but we were actually the early adopters and the drivers for a lot of under-the-hood enhancements and advancements within Fedora's release processes. I like the summary. Uh, we need a KD release for Fedora 7, that's all. Yeah, well, back then, like, detail, you could tell we've gotten better at this. Oh, yeah, no, this is... It's better than most distros, even in this state. But yeah, nowadays that's that's, that's real sad. Details: create a live CD that is installable. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so this was oh, I remember when this stuff happened. It was such a long time ago. Q oh, but no. like this theming include GTK QT engine. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of opinions on that one. Yup. <laughs> but yeah, so like the core extras merge, which was what brought KDE into the main Fedora distribution back in Fedora 7, mm -hmm. happened in that release. Mm -hmm. So did the feature of live CD. So did the ability to make a custom derivative. All of that stuff happened in the same release. And Fedora KDE was the flagship for that. Mm -hmm. They were the first. I think we even... I want to... Uh, yeah, because Fedora Prime was also KDE-based. Mm -hmm. And then Fedora KDE happened, and so there you go. Like, it was our, it was the first spin. Oh, Nouveau came out that release, too. 
That's how old it is. Like, Nouveau was the same release that Fedora KDE spin became a thing. Oh my god. Yeah, this is a this is a crazy release. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Like Fedora like back then, this mm -hmm. was still considered detailed. Look at this. Feature render. X render became a thing in Fedora 7. Wait, in render as well? Yeah, that was there. Oh my god. Well, again, these were these were not detailed. Look at that. Render 1.2. Server supports render. Add render support. Requires changes. <laughs> Test plan, nothing. Dependencies, nothing. Details, nothing. Even if you don't know you want it, you want it. <laughs> yeah. God. People take for granted that Rander exists, but... Yeah. Right, it didn't exist in the beginning. Like... When I first used Linux, we did not have the ability to change the monitor configuration while the system was running. You had to log out and mm -hmm. log back in again, or you had to reboot. Yep. Most of the time, you had to reboot. Like, but, you know, you look at a Fedora 7 feature versus a Fedora 40 feature, mm -hmm. a Fedora 40 change, right? You take uh, and then you go... DNF5, for example. I don't know. Oh, that's Fedora 41. Oh, 41, sorry. Okay. KDE change, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the KDE change, right? Like, the KDE... Like, I mean, the KDE change in Fedora 7 and the KDE change in Fedora 40 are completely different. Mm -hmm. They're, like, you can see how much more filled out it is. The quality and the details of documentation are an order of magnitude higher. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it means everyone else can now do this. Mm -hmm. Other people are going to follow in our footsteps. I believe Chaos has already done it. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if others do. Yeah. This is... Right? So <laughs> the difference is, yeah, that difference, man. <laughs> It's a big difference. It's, it's big a very difference. big difference. <laughs> well, hi there. You, yeah, there you go. That's 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 changes in a nutshell. It's mm -hmm. effectively a way to coordinate, document, and validate that you've done what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. and other people can do what repeat what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a crucial part of what makes Fedora a leader in the in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Other distributions just don't do this. Like, they really don't. Arch just kind of started doing an RFC process. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll see this in more distributions, but it's really not a common thing. And even RFCs, like, they aren't necessarily detailed like these are. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Fedora changes are so detailed is because uh, we know implicitly that each Fedora change gets judged by, by our downstream Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Mm -hmm. The people at Red Hat look at those changes. They, there's a JIRA ticket that's made for it that they, they have internally. Mm -hmm. Their engineering management validates it. They check what it whether it applies to them. They check whether they want to care about it. For example, when Butterfest went by default in Fedora, I promise you that on the Red Hat side, the ticket was created and they said, well, we don't care. So closed. Yeah. 